Hi, this is Brian Biron with PlatformEconomyInsights.com with a quick briefing on Apple's change in their payments policy related to Facebook's paid online events program. This is news because it was a subject of real conflict between Facebook and Apple. Not always the best of friends from a big business perspective. So let's run through it quick. So first of all, what's the paid online events program? Facebook rolled this out back in August as a way for independent workers who do business face-to-face -face with clients. Think of, let's say, uh, personal trainers or artists who work with subjects, music teachers, the kinds of people who earn money working face-to-face -face with other people. Many of them have been harmed by the pandemic because it's just hard in many places between shutdowns and just fear of working with people so closely for these people to make money. Facebook is putting together a program to try to help these people offer their services over the internet. Maybe it's with the people that they always worked with before, but now they can be in different places working over the internet. Maybe it's they can find new customers far away. But Facebook is describing it as a way to help these small businesses and entrepreneurs earn money during this really difficult time. Facebook said that they would not charge fees associated with the payments between the clients and the workers. Great thing. They asked Apple to waive the fees that Apple normally charges when they require any service provider who works over an app to pay a 30% commission through the Apple Payments system. They also asked Google for the same thing. Now, Google told Facebook that they would not waive their own payments fee, but they would allow Facebook to do the payments themselves. And as I said, Facebook has said that they won't charge fees until next August, August 2021. Apple, on the other hand, according to Facebook, refused to compromise at all. They would not allow Facebook to do the payments and they also would not waive their fees. That's what's changed. Apple has announced, or they've told Facebook, and actually Facebook's announced, that Apple has said that Facebook could handle the payments for this program until the end of this year. So we're talking about the end of December, 2020. So for the next three and a half months, for this one big program, Apple is gonna let Facebook handle payments and they know that Facebook is not going to actually charge any fees. This is a big change given how much Apple is now facing criticism on the big issues related to their App Store rules, in particular around payments and the fees that go along. Again, Apple charges a 30% fee for most service providers who make money through apps that are purchased or acquired through the App Store. That 30% fee is causing increasing difficulty from a policy perspective for Apple. The, the vultures are circling, trying to get Apple to change their fee system. And actually, this is a really pretty new development, big picture. If you go back two years, Apple was not at the top of the list of big tech companies under fire for anti-competitive or abusive conduct. Honestly, think back. It was really Facebook and Google and even Amazon. Apple was down the list. That's really changed. Apple is increasingly being criticized and you have to think about why. A big part of that is a change in the Apple business model over the last few years. Services and the money made through digital services are an increasingly important part of the Apple business model. It's not anymore that Apple is really just making money by selling devices like the iPhones and the iPads and computers. They're increasingly making money through the services that run over those devices. And those services run into business conflicts with other service providers. And that's creating a lot of controversy and governments are getting involved. So we now have for example, investigations for anti-competitive conduct aimed at Apple for their App Store policies and their payments fees in Europe, the U.S. Department of Justice, 
Korea, Australia, and Japan, just to name a few. In, in addition, just this week, a group of 13 businesses, some of them bigger app developers led by Spotify, Epic Games, Match, the match in, you know, the match business with Match.com, Tinder, they have put together a small coalition called the Coalition for App Fairness, which has put up offices in Washington, D.C. and Brussels. And if you read their 10 principles of app store businesses, they really want government to overturn the fundamental business model and really eliminate the ways that both Apple and Google really monetize app businesses that operate over their platforms. We're going to have to see where that goes, but let's, let me tell you, you can look at Spotify in Europe. There's no question that the music app business Spotify was integral in the European competition authority agreeing to open an investigation of Apple. Epic, Epic Games, which is the developer of Fortnite, has filed a U.S. antitrust lawsuit against Apple, as well as a different one against Google, really laying out the case for why Epic claims that those two businesses are engaged in anti-competitive conduct in terms of how they monetize app businesses that operate over their platforms. Again, that's a really interesting and important case to follow. So bringing it back to this Facebook situation, Apple, who's under fire from many directions now on the payments and app store front, had rejected the Facebook request to allow this goodwill program essentially to help small businesses during the pandemic. And they've changed course and are now agreeing to do it. One last thing to know is that Apple and Facebook have not been the best of friends, so to speak, with even at the CEO level, criticism in very direct ways back and forth. Apple CEO Tim Cook has been very critical of Facebook on numerous occasions, disparaging what he describes as their anti-privacy advertising-based business model, essentially arguing that the Apple business model is not just more protective of privacy, but is really a more pro-consumer kind of business. I have a feeling that Facebook has been happy to be able to go back very directly and publicly at Apple over this consumer-friendly fee issue when they've gotten the chance. So, at least for the rest of this year, Facebook has put a notch into this Apple firewall in terms of not compromising on payments fees and app fees. We'll see if it extends beyond the end of 2020. With that, this is Brian Baron with PlatformEconomyInsights.com. Until our next briefing, bye-bye.